said I look like a goth. She's I don't know. Mean, it's... like a teenager goth. Well, she's kind of got that going on. I mean, she's got the choker and everything. What? I don't look goth. You don't? You're mean. I don't have. Goth I don't know. Hair. You look young and cool. I look like somebody's grandfather. <laughs> okay. Looks like the thing is working. Okay. Happy well, Friday. Happy Friday. <gasps> oh no, Cricklebot is here. Hi, Cricky. Hi, Cricky. Um, I don't know. We have to order pizza. We do. So we have to. Get Shop, to it. Yeah, get to it because... Did you want to do that before doing this? No. Did the mail ever come? I don't know. I have no idea. You never gave my package. I never heard anybody. I don't Sorry, know. whoever... I forgot who ordered something, but your package didn't go out today, I don't think. Unless the mail magically appears. Okay. Um, from Nacho Valenti. Hi, Sabrina and Spencer. I have an SKX 173 since 2013 and always working perfectly until last month that started to get ahead about five, six minutes a day and was like that for a month more or less. Suddenly it has started to work as before and now it has been working perfectly for three weeks. You know why this is happening and if it is necessary to take it to service, thanks a lot. Uh, what happens, I would, I'd be willing to bet any amount of money is that your um your hair springs on your balance stuck together um uh, maybe it was lightly magnetized or maybe there was some kind of i don't know gunk or something on there what happens is, is when you've got a couple coils on the main spring on the hair spring and they stick together in effect it shortens the hair spring and it also stiffens it up which means that the the travel of the balance is much shorter and much faster which in effect makes the watch run more quickly and then something happened and the those coils became unstuck and away it went she loves me of course she does she's gonna sing that song does she love me love me <gasps> oh my god she's on me <gasps> oh she's oh settling my down god she never sits on me she says please don't put toes on me oh yeah we have to put toe caps on her okay, okay. okay sorry Lane Edwards, thanks guys for the bracelet info, it really helped. I do have another question. I just had my 1969 5126-6010 serviced and is running within plus or minus five seconds. However, whenever I adjust the time, the second hand moves back and forth five seconds. Is that a problem? And if so, what do you think is the problem? Thank you again for taking the time to help out out all of us watch nuts. P.S. Would you mind doing a video of some cool and unique Seiko bracelets that you know of and have? That's a good idea. She's drooling on me. Is she? Yeah. <laughs> um, second question for Seiko bracelets. I got a ton of them, but I don't know how many I have that are, are like, are truly rare. I Whenever I have like a watch that's complete and original with its original rare bracelet, uh, if for some reason those watches, I, I tend to get sold. What? It's like their drool is coming out like a water bottle. It's so gross. Cats do that when they're happy. Um, on your on your five one two six, uh, that sometimes happens on indirect seconds things that they just they flick around. My Rolex does it. So um, I don't know. It's just it's just one of those things. It's uh, I mean you could in theory try to uh, adjust it because uh, it's got a it's got a little uh, slidey stoppy levery thing, but. As long as it's keeping good time and it pushes the day date over as it should, you're fine. Don't worry about it. From Julie Hill. Mother Nature, she seems to pull the wool over our eyes and says, Hey, have kids. You know you want kids. <laughs> no comment. Mm. What? Nothing. I'm just playing with Cricky. Yeah. Uh, well, we have three kids, but that's the end of the road. No more for us. And no more puppies. No more puppies. And no more crickies. No more crickle butts. God, you're a drooler. I wish that they could see her. And, and she blends into my goth-like black shirt. It's true. Um, hey, so she's the perfect creature for me right now. That's why she's drawn to you. Oh. From, Princess of the night. Okay. From Randolph Cirillo. YouTube is so backwards, no need to worry about the numbers. We love, love your videos. Thank you. You guys are great, not boring at all. Watching a guy with your kind of knowledge, it's always a joy. I have a question, well, two. What was your occupation prior to this? I was in retail for, for my very first job when I was like 17 uh, until basically the end of my corporate career at FedEx. Uh, at FedEx, I was, 
all kinds of different things. I was an auditor for FedEx, so I went to all these locations throughout this territory and I looked at their FedEx office locations and I made sure they were doing what they were doing and I helped craft the program to audit these locations. I was a store manager. Um, I was a, a, a manager of several different locations at a different time. I don't know, just decades of retail, uh, soul training work. Uh, and But you know, FedEx, as time goes by, the, the, the section of FedEx that I was part of, which was mostly their quick printing, because uh, the, they bought Kinko's, um, is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's like, you know, what are you going to do? And so, again, all credit to Sabrina, who said, you know, you can make your hobby into a business. And she was right. I was right. Um, no. And why won't you take on an apprentice? I just don't know where I'd put an apprentice. Plus, I mean, you have a blind leading the blind situation. You really want me teaching people how to do anything? Um, I don't know. As I've said, I don't want random people in the house. And you know what? The random people don't want to be in the house. You remember the just thing about, hey, have kids? You know you want kids? You don't know. I want to be around my kids or his drooling cat. You get up there. <laughs> so I love the idea. So then he would have less work, but I don't like the idea of having a random person. When, when the time comes that I have a dedicated shop finally built, um, um, that's something I'll probably be more inclined to consider. I mean, it would be nice if I had somebody who was really, you know, really seriously trained up. Uh, really, really did their stuff. Um, it could greatly increase our volume, which would be nice, and the person would pay for themselves if they do, if they're doing good work. Um, just right now, I just don't have a place to put them. And in fact, my big bench that I used, I just made it smaller. I cut it down by about a third. So there's literally no place to put anyone at this point. Soon though, someday. That's it. Love your show. Hope to one day have my bullhead service by you. Oh, P.S. I need a crisp. Crystal for an SRP 713 where? Uh, that's tough because uh, that's modern Seiko and uh, I don't really have any lines on that. Plus, uh, as far as I understand it, Seiko is closing all of their worldwide parts networks. So uh, I, I just, I honestly don't know. There's a few guys in Europe uh, that um, seem to be able to get their hands on uh, modern current Seiko spare parts. Uh, uh, I would have to do some digging before I had a name for you, but uh, that's, I don't know, that's one notion, but unfortunately it's not me. No, I have a splinter. I'm sorry. What's your cat's problem? My dad? Cats! Let's cat. see, my, my dad isn't with us anymore. He has no problems. <laughs> it's a cat. I don't know. She, she's pissed off about something. Probably she wants more food. I fed her like four times today. From Sam D. Thanks for the continued great work. Quick question about your assessment of watches on the time grapher. It seems that you are mainly concerned about the amplitude of a watch and you deem a watch good or bad based on the amplitude. Can you explain why this particular data point is such a critical measure? Thanks. Uh, I, I actually answered this in typing, but I figured it was a good question to answer. Amplitude is really important uh, for a few reasons. There are one, there are specs that the watch is supposed to run within. It's supposed to be in this a, a range of amplitude. But you want good, if you have poor amplitude on a watch, what that tells us is that power that's coming out of the mainspring is being bled off in all kinds of places. Maybe the mainspring is dirty or heavily worn or the gear train is unlubricated and dirty uh, or the, the pallet fork is damaged or dirty or the, nothing is lubricated. So when you have low amplitude, it's saying it's a big flashing neon sign that says there's a problem or multiple problems. And so you want to, when I'm, when I'm getting into servicing a watch and I, and I run the numbers, I, I have a pretty good idea of where they're going to be based on how the, the, watch, the appearance of the watch. Um, but um, sometimes you'll see some stuff that's truly alarming. Amplitude is important, especially when I'm done, because then I look at it and I say, okay, well, I've got good numbers, it's clean. And then, especially if you have high amplitude, that means not only that you're getting, you're not losing power through the train and everything else like that, it also makes it much easier to regulate, and it is much, uh, the watch will be more accurate, because uh, it's going to be at a higher amplitude, It's gonna, you're going to have greater rotational stability, uh, it's, it's just, everything is better when you have higher amplitude to a point. You don't want to have, you don't want to go over 
because you'll start getting a thing called the overbanking, which is where the with a with a balance rotates too far. But that's that's pretty rare with Seiko. I only ever really see that with Bill Maddox. Um, but anyway, it's the um, amplitude is the first stop for. Did you just drop all your watches? No, I dropped your watch. Hey. Anyway, no, these watches I didn't drop. That's a big idea. Yeah, I don't. A know. hot dog doesn't go. Does too. Goes right in my belly. What's Sorry, that? there's for all the parents that have to read stupid books to their kids. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. It was the um the the du not the duck the pigeon gets a hot dog. Oh, I got you. Mm. Okay, from Dale Taylor Jr. I greatly enjoy each and every video here. Thank you for bringing us into your life each week. God bless you and have a great week. I just put that on there because I wanted some validation for you. Oh, thank you. That was nice. Mm -hmm. From John Boy of Alaska. Hey, Spencer, regarding the demo of setting an H55 movement, you could use the one you are working on, cough, cough. I think more people want to see what they look like and how they operate. I know it took me a while to learn and relearn how to operate my H557. I like that idea. No, it's 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 a good one. Um, but nobody is expected to remember how to run these movements. Um, I have, okay, I'm going to digress just for a second. I have a number of, every now and then I'll get in a junk watch or something funky and it kind of piques my interest. But I don't want to dedicate a ton of time to it originally, uh, like initially. So I put it off to one side, and as things appear or come to me or whatever, I start to work on it. And eventually, at a certain point, I end up with a finished watch, like this one. This is an 0139 5019. This is a dual time zone watch. It's a quartz watch, uh, one of the nice ones that Seiko made in the 1970s. This was expensive in its day. This was not a cheap watch. And Seiko's finishing on it was ex was wonderful. But that setting on the... Uh, so, but I finally... I found another junk watch on eBay for, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. And it had the parts I needed. So between the two, I could make one working watch. But to set this thing is really weird. Kind of like an H55 where you have to basically pull stuff and put things to a setting thing and then rotate the crown one way or the other. This actually has that same system. But I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to set this thing. So all I did was, because I, I don't even have all those manuals that show this stuff, but if you Google it, um, it this is what I did. I went and I said, crap, I can't figure out how to set this thing. So I went and I Googled, because I know this is 0139A movement. I I googled Seiko 0139A.pdf and what that'll do, that'll bring you to a couple different sites where you can literally, you'll look at the, it's, it'll be usually the technical guide and it will have a parts guide and if you read the original Seiko technical manual, it gives you Not all. Not everyone's technical, I know that way. Well, oh no, but it has all, I'm sorry. When I am trying to learn something, I find that watching a video of somebody telling me how to do it is um, easier for me to understand than reading something. Well, you're not actually reading something. The Seiko manuals actually are pictorial. They actually have a diagram. They're like, do this. I like seeing someone do it. Okay, well, I, I get it. I understand. But this is like, it has a picture of the watch and says, pull out the crown with an arrow. Turn this way. Do this thing. And it's step by step by step by step on how to set the watch. And I did it, and it worked. So it's, it's a dual time zone watch. You've got the first time like that, or you can rotate the crown, because right now it shows the date. You can rotate the crown, and it goes to, no, now it's the date, and there's the seconds, or you press the upper crown, and it goes to the second time zone. Uh, but to set this thing was a bear. Um, so that's what I do a lot of times. If I have a weird movement I'm not familiar with, I'll Google it and see if, you know, hopefully that, that, that's that been scanned and put up. And there's a bunch of places that have them. I totally just realized we forgot to turn the air off. I apologize for the noise in the background, but it's hot as balls outside. Hotter hotter than the devil's chili pot. <laughs> and I bet he makes a mean chili. <laughs> You're silly. Crown Super Cruise. Hi, Spencer and Sabrina. Spencer, what are the notable differences in the 6139A and 6139B caliber movements? I have recently done restorations on two watches, one with the 6139A and one with the B. I have noted 
the minute counter jumper and chrono reset spring on the A version appears to be different than the B version, with the B version appearing a bit more robust. What other notable parts are different? Thanks, as usual, for your insights. Uh, that's a real key word, robust. Uh, the A movement is pretty lightly built. The, the bridges, the, the train bridge is thinner. Uh, the springs are lighter. Um, it's got that. It's got that intermediate wheel for the minute counter that's pinned to the underside of the chronograph bridge. Uh, but it has some other stuff, like the post for the for the hammer is just sitting there. It's not an ex not eccentric. On the B, they went and made that so it's a slot and you can turn it to adjust out play. Uh, between those two faces, with an A, you have to actually remove the that that dual face hammer and 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 basically use uh, jeweler's files and take down one of the faces to try to make it so that it it contacts both heart wheels simultaneously. That's that's one thing. Uh, obviously, the chronograph wheel is a lot lighter in the A. In the B, it's beefed up. They basically for the B, they took the heavier duty chronograph wheel for the 6138s and they just they modified it basically with a shorter pinion uh, for the for the B movements, and that's I mean there's a couple other little things, um, the, but mostly that I mean those those are the main differences. There just are certain things that won't swap over. Oh, also the um, obviously they changed the that intermediate wheel instead of being just a, a, a thing pinned to the underside of the bridge because it gums up and those things get really really hard and then the minute counter stops functioning. So that's a separate wheel in the B, and it has the tiny little uh, single screw bridge that goes over the train bridge jewels, and it holds that in place, and uh, there's just a couple other little differences like that, but they add up. I think the biggest one is the fact that the eccentric uh, is there in, in the B. That's that's a huge, huge, huge deal, because it can save lots of time. What? Is there someone at the door, or am I crazy? Nobody at the door, but you're not crazy. Well, thank you. From KJ Culp. Hey guys, question for next week. I have an SRP that I'm using as a makeshift dual time watch. Now, I've got the original bezel with insert and I've got a donor bezel to which I've added a 12 hour insert. Here's my problem. Oh, I'm sorry, that's my problem. I'm tired. The stock bezel is nice and tight, but the donor bezel has a lot of play back and forth. It also rotates with very little effort allowing it to turn accidentally. Is there any way to easily modify the bezel spring to tighten up the bezel action and increase its resistance to rotation? Thanks. Well, that's not what causes the resistance. What causes the resistance is the rubber O-ring gasket. So does your bezel, does the secondary rotating ring have a rubber O-ring gasket in it? Um, another thing is, is it a stock Seiko bezel? That's another thing to check. Those are the two things. First thing is I'd look for the rubber, make sure that it's there. If it doesn't have one, pull the rubber from the other one, put it in there, try it again, see how it behaves. And if it behaves, there's your answer. Um, if it doesn't do something, then I don't know, uh, there's something up with uh, the rotating ring, the, the secondary one. I didn't know where I left off. Neither did I. From, I can't tell. Rob, Rob Raver or Rob Raver? I don't know. What would one of these watches be worth now? I got a beat up old one that still keeps time. Just wondering if it's worth getting it properly renovated. He's talking about a 6309 Diver. Um, they're, they're, people really like them. They're hot. I mean, they're hot enough that Seiko reissued them, essentially. Um, it all depends on cosmetic condition, but even one in pretty beaten up condition will bring a good couple hundred dollars these days in really nice shape. They bring real money, no joke. Uh, so everything depends on cosmetic condition. That's the way that it goes. So you'd have to send me a shot so we could see what it looked like. What? You haven't shown them what you're wearing. Oh, it's like I'm wearing, I'm wearing all black because I'm goth today. <laughs> I've, been wear, I've genuinely not been wearing my sub. Oh, I'm sunken in a chair. She's it's wearing a 2003 falling. Omega Railmaster. Yay, it's so cool. And this morning she was wearing an Arnie. I was. If you follow my my Instagram, I've started posting gym and watch pics because those are two things I like. And she tagged Arnie in the picture. I did, but he didn't say anything. That's sad. I know. Uh, from F. Sohail. Good 
taste there, Sabrina. Love those watches too. Small is good, but these aren't that small, are they? No, they're not teeny tiny. No, they're 40 millimeters. They're a perfect size. Yeah. It, I mean, if you compare them to this, the later version, the 6105, uh, 8110, I mean, these things are kind of burly. Right. Whereas this is... That's more comfortable for my tiny wrist. Oh, yeah. It's not tiny. It's not tiny. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful, elegant shape, and it's a perfect size. These these are a little big. Uh, They'd sit really high on my wrist. Yeah. But still such an elegant case shape. Anyway, there you go. Okay. From Alonzo Cushing. Chip magnet. Made my day. My 6217, March 1967 has a high top crystal, and as you say, it has attracted quite a few minor scratches on it. This is the only thing that detracts from the appearance of this beautiful Seiko. Yeah, well, we're talking about the Type 1 crystal. Now, the difference with your 6217 is that actually is a domed acrylic. Uh, and so, yeah, it's going to attract some hits, but the nice thing about acrylic is it can be polished. You just got really quiet. I did? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Steve Jones, from what I have seen from a serial number study is that for some reason the seven digit Japan X marked watches mm. were numbered continuously from March to July 1968 as a single series, unlike the Japan G marked ones that ran serial sequences for one month at a time. The highest Japan X serial proof I have, this only applies to 1968, for is number 8725106 on a 6105 8000 proof model. Well, that's all. That's that's that tells us that's very interesting if that's the case because it tells us how many watches Seiko produced during that period in that factory. Um, that's very that's pretty cool. Uh, I I was I was speculative about my sort of theory about it, but the great thing about the scientific method is that allows one to what? It allows you to put forth a theory and if the theory is supported then it continues to be supported, and if there other evidence comes up that contradicts it, then we know how to move on from it. I there. know all about it. You do? Yeah, you might look at my all of you class at some point. For me, uh, I actually, I prefer six-digit serials because I have, I like the problem the, with threes. I have a problem with threes, and I also like the number six because it's two threes, and it's balanced. Hey, look who's back. <gasps> it's Cricklebot. She must be really hungry. Okay, then I'll, I'll try and finish this. Um, from CL027, sweet, can't wait for the SDWA89 video. I worked out a trade for this watch six months ago. I got the SDWA89 in some cash and I traded away the Citizen Nighthawk I bought off of you for a while back. What? That was the Christmas present. Yeah, it was a Christmas present for him. Now it's somewhere in the wild. It is. No, I don't care. I, I seriously am not being a jerk. <laughs> It might uh, be a jerk to anyone, it's him. Yeah, you know, I know, it's true. So, uh, thank you. I, 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 This watch, I want to do a review of this watch because, I, again, this is this. This watch, like this watch, was one of these ones I had sitting on the long-term shelf of just uh, parts and things. And eventually I came across the things to sort of make it work again. And it's a 7327D19. But apparently the model number is SDWA. Eight, nine, and that's what this is. It's a cool watch. It's a cool watch, and I really want to do a review on these. Um, it's 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 just it's it's neat um, because Seiko. I mean, it's a pretty standard Seiko quartz movement for the time. Um, it's got the alarm function. Day. It, uh, it's got date only. Um, it's a, a stopwatch. Ooh, hang on, I have a phone call. Sorry, I got a phone call. Yep. And you might hear some squeaking outside the door. Sorry. We're almost done. Um, from Smucker's Tea, anyone find it odd that Seiko was putting a nicer crystal on their divers than Rolex was? Also, this watch was made in my mother's birth uh, month and year. Also, Reloom, that watch, the black loom is bad for the chrome markers. Uh, he's talking about this one right here. Rolex is old school. Uh, they always were old school. I mean, obviously they've updated their stuff. Like they use sapphire crystals now, but underneath she's gonna scratch me. She's gonna fall off and scratch my leg. Is she? Yes. Any case, but I mean, Rolex. I mean, they produced with the with the acrylic crystals for a really really long time. And they're an old school throwback kind of thing. They use sapphire now, which is fine. I don't know how often they get scratched, but I've never whacked one. Um, but. Their crystals tend to be a little lower and tighter in. Like my sub, the crystal's exactly flat. You'd have to really try to hit it. But also, I don't know 
really how many people treat their Rolex as like tool watches anymore, so who knows. What about the moon being bad for the chrome markers? Well, yeah, of course it is. Well, uh, because, I don't know. Because it's corrosive. And so, yeah, when you see this black or Wait, blue... Wait, then why were you like, do you want me to relume it? Well, no, because I want to talk about what kind of relume you want to uh, talk about if you want it to be, like, old school. Like, I want Ventolume. You want my Ventolume? So, but I can do Ventolume with a little bit of glow or, or like, basically zero glow. A little. Okay, it's like a half glow is normally what I do because then it actually it makes the watch functional again, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, it will actually perform and do all the things it needs to do. No, I don't like if a, an old watch has, like, loom. No, no, because then it'll look green in daylight. It's just strange. Uh, Mansuri Amine. I purchased recently an SKX 007 K2. And I wanted to know if it's normal when I open the crown it's a little bit loose. If you have any suggestions or ideas, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, it's just the way that they're produced because you have the solid stem and then the stem is is basically is locked into the crown uh, with sort of a springy thing, but it's the crown's going to be kind of floppy. It's fine. It doesn't matter. And, and, unless the crown stops physically turning the stem, don't worry about it. From William, William Stalvey. Beautiful work. I've got a proof proof 6105. Does anyone know how much I should ask for it on eBay? Everything depends on condition. Well, I mean, it's a 6105, so people are going to want to pay money for it. That's so fine. if it's a piece of garbage, how much? It really depends. I mean, they can vary wildly. I mean, if it's something like this, I mean, probably you're going to be talking in like the 600 range. If it's something like this, just from the loom standpoint, you're going to be in the solid four figures. It just, it depends. Everything depends on condition. My one thing is, is if it's original, if your watch is completely original, like if you're the original owner, don't do anything to the watch. Don't clean it, don't service it, don't do any of that stuff. Collectors are not interested in pre-restored watches. They'll be happier to get it as it is right now. Uh, and you will also, you won't invest any more money in it. Just sell it exactly as it is. What? Willow's pushing paper under the door and Kraken's like, what? <laughs> um, from Chris Greenwood. If you know nothing of the Seiko history of this model, it would still appeal to most folk, a special watch these days. Imagine copying your eyes on one of those in the 70s. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, because, again, like Rolex dominated the diver market back then, right? So everybody knew kind of what they looked like. Seiko, I mean, this is completely out of the blue. This looked like nothing else that was being made at the time, and still nothing looks like this today. It is an utterly unique design, especially this beautiful case design. It's just, it's extreme, it's just so unique. And they're just, they're, it's just a magnificent watch, and they're attention grabbers. They're just the beautiful, beautiful watches. Seiko did an amazing job. Whoever it was who designed this case with all these amazing compound curves, they need to be found and have their hand shook. Okay. Um, so again, I, I am gonna try to do, I wanna do this on this particular watch because I think it's really kind of special and I wanna talk about it a little more. And I'm also, thanks to Larry, Uncle Seiko, he sent me his SBDC 053, and so I'm going to be doing a yesterday's watch review today of this watch. Thank you, Larry. I do love it. It's great. I haven't really been wearing it because it's still got its case box sticker. I don't want to mess that up, dude. Unless you're unless you're going to trade this thing to me for something, in which case I'll happily wear it because I like it. She likes it too. Um, but I don't know. I, I'd like to wear it more, but I don't want to. I don't want to hurt it. So, but I am going to do a review of it because it's that's. That's a pretty cool watch. Okay, thanks folks. Happy Saturday and keep those questions, happy Friday and keep those questions coming. Hi, Crickles. I just shocked her nose. Oh no. Okay, you folks have a good weekend.